Oh man, this thing is a blast. I am happy, happy, happy with it. So I, I finished out the templates, um, the template holders, it'll help, you know, so you can put a, a regular turn piece in, make a template, blah, blah, blah. I'll show you that here in the video. Really cool. Um, anyway, let's get started and I'll show you how this thing, all, I threw this thing together and how awesome it works. It's so cool, man. So picking up where we left off in the last video, I took the headstock back out and I'm drilling a quarter inch hole in the center bolt of that headstock. The reason I'm doing that is I want to put a, uh, a little quarter inch shaft sticking out of it so I can center other templates, um, other style of holders and headstocks on there. Here I'm just getting ready to cut, cut a piece to hold the drill on. I just set it up against the drill, marked it out, and now I'm just cutting it out on the bandsaw. And while I was waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up, I put that quarter inch uh, bolt in there and just hot and uh, epoxied it in and then uh, taped it up so it would dry and I came back later with an um, angle grinder and cut it off so it was only sticking out about a quarter inch. So I got my hot glue gun ready, I just uh, slapped a piece on the little template I cut out for the drill holder and uh, ran some screws in it. <clears throat> and then mounted it up next to the drill. You don't need a lot of force holding that drill in place, just enough so the drill won't move around when you're spinning your headstock at you know ridiculous speeds. I took it out and then I used a hose clamp and tightened everything back up and then just tightened the hose clamp down and that holds the drill in place really nicely. It does a good job. So next I wanted to work on the uh, template holders. These hold, the template holders will hold templates or it'll hold um, uh, an already turned piece that you want to copy. So in my plans, they're all on the template holders in my plans are one to one. So I just took the piece over to my plans and then marked everything out. And then uh, went over and cut it out on the table saw. All the little parts and pieces. And then I wanted to make a knob for the uh, headstock template holder, and I didn't make a pattern for it, so I just uh, used the used the uh, plans, set up my compass, and marked it out. Basically, getting everything ready to drill all the holes in. And I went over and uh, set everything up and started drilling all the holes for everything for the template holders. The way I designed those template holders, they actually sit in the track below the piece that's turning. That way they're, they're easy to center out when you're trying to um, get it all nice and pretty. And then there's that infamous hot glue gun again, just gluing a little spacer on there. And then I took my hot glue gun and glued all the little parts and pieces and bits together um, following the plans. And then I'd come back after it had all dried up and ran screws in it. Here I'm putting a three quarter inch piece on the bottom of the headstock template holder and that'll just sit in that track that the uh, tailstock rides along in. There's tighten it down and the, and the rear headstock actually works on the uh, on the tailstock fastener. So. And then these are the plans for the uh, router slide or the sled for the router. But uh, because I'd already built one before, I'm not redoing the whole thing. I'm just cutting out a few parts I need to modify it. Whew! All right. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll have part three up with plans in the next four or five months. I'm just kidding. Oh, we're almost done. <laughs> All right, so rather than rebuilding the, the router sled, um, I'm just going to use the old one I have, and I'm just tweaking it out a little bit. This one's fully adjustable. I've got a 5 16 bolt in here with a handle on it, and then I put a T-nut in here and secured it with a couple of screws on both sides. So that, that slides in there, and then I can just move this back and forth, and the router sits on top of that slide, and that moves back and forth so I can adjust it. And then I'm just going to screw it to this base to add some height to it that I need. And then I can um, put my router mount back on here. And my pin, my pin for following the guide, I'm going to mount right in front here. 
and that pin will just follow the guide here and I'll make a slot so I can put different size pins in for different size router bits. But um, my, my plans have a different mounting system and I'm going to do it on the front out here. The ones up on the plans it mounts up on here on this top bracket and comes out. Either way works. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it this way because I already have this sled made and I don't want to make another one. Okay, so here I'm just modifying the sled. Again, hot glue gun and uh, building it up a little bit so it'll match my height. Now that track in the, uh, in the base, I put that in there so you can put a track on the bottom of the sled and slide it back and forth and make perfect dowels. Um, and I didn't show that in this video. I'll do it in a future video. But here I'm just mounting on some uh, more hose clamps to mount the router to. It's a lot better option for really getting a nice tight snug hold down. Okay so what I've done is I've built up this nose here and then I've made a slot that I can slide different pieces in and I can make uh, different profiles to match whatever bit I'm using. This is obviously not, this is the bit with the for the profile for this one. This is the bit I'm going to be using but um, then I can just screw it down in place and uh, follow a profile with this along an edge and that will work great. This is exciting. I'm really, really looking forward to trying this and we're just so close. So the way I, I left this plate blank so you can mount all kinds of different mounting brackets and heads to it and um, we'll go over some of that in another video. And then uh, I built the side up so I could put a piece of polyacrylic on it to be a chip guard, but I accidentally grabbed the kind you can't see through, so that's not going to do me any good today. One of the things I wanted to show you really quick is that this drill is variable speed by the amount of pressure you put on the trigger, and since I'm locking the trigger in place, it's no longer variable speed, it's just a high speed. So I found uh, this, this old sewing machine that someone was chucking out because the machine machine was broken, but I took the pedal and I've wired it up through the pedals so I can uh, get low speeds, medium speeds, or, or super fast speeds just by wiring it through this, uh, this old sewing machine pedal. And then I can put a bolt through here and make it adjustable so I can adjust the speed um, quite accurately. So that's a neat little trick if you want to make your, your lathe um, variable speed. Now, What's really cool about this little template setup here is you can just put this one, a regular leg in there that you want to duplicate or whatever and then they just follow it along with your, your pattern on your router sled or you can make your own make your own template and by just putting a couple blocks in putting a couple blocks in and fastening them to those template guides you can go along and then you can follow a template so you can basically draw any pattern that you want and make anything, duplicate anything. 